and breath control pranayama which prepare the body and mind for experiencing higher states of consciousness these practices can lead to an awareness of the infinite the awakening of kundalini energy and the balancing of chakras are believed to facilitate access to higher states of consciousness connecting individuals with the infinite where we say we calling this kala as a being a large formless not large infinite formless being and he breathes so we are breathing through our every pore in the skin like that when he breathes that created a certain amount of energy that he be call a shakti shakti came out of him when energy came out of him then this this firmament of nothingness which is a powerful force it started reverberating initially then caused ripples those ripples led to cyclical movements so with these cyclical movements the first physical forms came out modern science uh, the methodology is uh, to come up with a concept make a theory build a mathematical backbone and then look for elements of proof which could confirm those things i i believe that's a methodology mm -hmm. the methodology of uh, mysticism or uh, mysticism or yogic way of looking at things is to turn inward and look at what we are made of this is coming from the fundamental uh in science you would say an assumption in my experience i say from the fundamental knowing the way i am made is not different from the way the universe is made i am just a tiny bit but still you can s sit here with these little eyes you can look up and look at gal a galaxy this is because this is made the same way and we are able to reflect that there are some studies people say that uh, they have looked at the vision and mindscapes of some insects or something some experiments have been made where they're saying their vision and their thing doesn't go beyond their survival requirements so this capability we have because we are able to reflect the entire universe within us if we wish in fact everything that we are seeing is only a reflection right now these people seem to be here but we are only seeing them the way they are reflecting in the firmament of our minds there is simply no other way to see it so having said that the fundamental instruments of perception is just this how we keep it different people can see different things based on how sharp they keep themselves when i say see i'm not only talking about visual apparatus we see through the five senses and more so in this context the way we see this is because of your uh, cosmology inevitably your uh, the other day uh, the boss didn't allow you to speak about time <laughs> because he said no it's time <laughs> but you had spoken about space which i see personally as a consequence of time Well, let me just uh, articulate in simple words what is the way we see the universe and see if how many overlaps are there and if there are things that don't overlap we can examine why they don't overlap it's like this in the in the yogic principle the universe was like this this is usually represented as an arborist a snake a mm -hmm. cobra running into each other mouth and tail included and a hood rising here so this is not the european arborist i know they make it a circle but this is how it was so we call this anant that means it's infinite it's infinite infinite yeah infinite i'm sorry We are Indian. You, know. <laughs> you invented the concept. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. I want to tell you, it's not a concept. This infinite or infinity was like this. 
the nature of infinity, I don't have to tell you, but for everyone. Uh, if you make infinity plus ten, it's still infinity. Infinity minus million, still infinity. So, your mathematics don't work. You do plus, minus, multiply, divide, nothing. So, it was like this. You could do nothing with it. Then it unfolded and became like <laughs> this. Then we call this shunya. Oh. Shunya means emptiness. It became empty. What, is, what was infinite became empty. This is very important to understand this. What was that which is infinite? Was it not empty? We could not even call it empty or full at that time because it's infinite. There's no plus minus to it, no multiplication and division to it. So it was this way, it uncoiled itself to become nothing. Nothing means we must put a hyphen between no and thing. Mm. It is a no thing, but it has a presence now. This presence, I'm assuming, maybe this presence is what the modern scientists are calling as dark energy or dark force or whatever. But it's very appropriate because we call this shunya or kala. The word kala means empty, the word kala means darkness, the word kala means time, the word kala means space. Yeah. All these four things became somewhat manifest because it became a kala. So this is here as emptiness, but we call this infinite space. Must mark my words, it's infinite, infinite, space, not time, because there is no distinction. It is time which is unfolding to become space. So once it became color like this, you can see it as emptiness, you can see it as time, you can see it as space, you can see it as the manifest… first manifestation of that which doesn't have a form. Anything that doesn't have a form is also called color. So, what was infinite space became zero, now plus one is plus one, minus one is minus one. Suddenly, there is… there is no physicality yet, but there is a mathematical foundation for its physicality. Now, once it became empty like this, this… the word shunya, is in terms of written word, for the first time it's seen about 400 B.C. There's a… there are documents where clearly the word shunya and the… the, the mark of a zero is there. It traveled to Arabia in early, uh, you know, the next part of how we count time today, because those divisions are not there in our minds because we have to communicate with the English-speaking world, we… we have also come that the t cut-off date is somewhere two thousand years ago <laughs> Otherwise, we don't have those cut-offs in our minds. So I'm… I'm just saying, A… what are you calling it now? Uh, A.D.? A.D.? It's not A.D. anymore, what are they calling it? A… C.E. C.E. It's called C.E. now, mm. common era or something. Oh, C.E., yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in the common era, in the first, second century, or maybe by third, fourth century, it traveled to Arabia because Indian traders were maintaining trade routes from India, from right from the bottom of India, that is southernmost parts of India, right up to Damascus, Jerusalem, Aleppo. Even today, Aleppo city is supposed to be 8,500 years old and that city was built by taxing the Indian traders. So. The live transaction was a daily business, people were traveling quite a lot. So, it traveled to Arabia where they called it cipher. The word cipher again meant empty. This cipher came to Europe, in Latin they called it Zephyrium. That went to Venice, Venice where it was the hub of many things happening in Europe. And there they called it zero and the English called it cipher. Mm. 
These days nobody's using that word cipher. When we were growing up, it was common to use the word cipher in English language, but I don't know in... Uh, as a code, as a secret code. Oh, is that...? Well, the word cipher is to do in English... Zero. Is, ...is connected with yeah. coding, but this is a different context. Yeah. We used to use the word cipher as a zero. When, say, it was used in a derogatory way, oh, he's a cipher, <laughs> yeah. he's nothing, <laughs> kind of thing. So, this aspect, once it became nothingness, but it was a firmament mm. of tremendous existence, but without physical form. Then we go into a more, mm, what to say, a dialectical way of expressing this, where we say, we're calling this kala as a being, a large, formless, not large, infinite, formless being. Infinite cannot have a form, of course, so it's a being. And he breathes. He was inhaling, inhaling is a long process, maybe running into millions or billions of years, there are calculations for that, I'm not the mathematician for that. And when he exhaled, when he exhaled, it's not that he has nostrils, he exhales from everywhere. If you did not have no actually even our skin is res you know, it's not only perspiring, it's also respiring, you know. So we are breathing through our every pore in the skin, like that when he breathed, that created a certain amount of energy, that we call a shakti, shakti came out of him. When energy came out of him, then this… this firmament of nothingness, which is a powerful force, it started reverberating initially, then caused ripples, those ripples led to cyclical movements. So with these cyclical movements, the first physical forms came out and it all over burst forth. As these cycles became more and more complicated, from uh, whatever we call as electrons, protons, at atoms, planetary systems, universes, all these evolved because of the cyclical movements. Fundamentally, we see physicality as a consequence of cyclical movement. Our very birth is because of the cyclical moments in our mother's body, so otherwise we wouldn't be born. There is a yogic doomsday you would mm. like to know, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so studying these cycles, feeling these cycles in our own bodies and studying these cycles, things were figured out because we were more interested in how to transform life here and how to make a human being go, go beyond these cycles. As I said earlier, the cycles of time are such, they can crush you. Why in their ch childhood they were like this, and now they become like this, lot of people, time has crushed them. People think it's their experiences of life, this and that. No, that is only an excuse, it's actually time which has crushed them. Or the same time could trap people. They're okay, but they're bored and they don't know what to do with themselves. Do you mean crush them in the sense that they die? No, that will anyway happen, mm -hmm. but when they're alive, they feel crushed by time. Mm -hmm. the, the cycles of time just crushes them day in and day out. Yeah. Many people wish the sun doesn't come up tomorrow morning, but it comes up and they have to go to work. Mm -hmm. it, crush <laughs> it crushes them. Mm -hmm. You know, in the uh, in United States, they have, uh, thank God it's Friday. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. It means they don't have to wake up tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes, yes. T G I F. We used yes. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At Caltech, there was a. We used to have the T G I F celebration every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we want to break these cycles. So any cycle naturally has a centripetal force and a centrifugal force. If you get caught up in the centripetal, you get crushed. If you ride the centrifugal, then you're released, a tangent is formed. So, to attain to this tangent is the goal of life in the East. We call this mukti, nirvana, moksha, whatever. Essentially, we want to ride the physical cycles in such a way we are liberated from the physical cycles. How did people see these things? How did people come up with these things? This is always a question. Well, how did the modern scientists see something? Today everybody's talking about Hubble and whatever the other one, John 
what John Space? James Webb Telescope. James Webb Space, whatever. The, what are these instruments? These instruments are just extensions of our own senses. Only because we have eyes, mm -hmm. only because we have eyes, the telescope means something. Otherwise, it, it's a... What is a telescope for a man who has no eyes? Simply nothing, all right? It's just a pipe. With a few mirrors and maybe lenses or whatever it is, it's just a pipe. It's a metal pipe, we can use it for something, but you can't use it because inside they've blocked it with so many things. Quite, <laughs> quite expensive. Expensive pipe. <laughs> I agree with that. So I'm saying only because we have eyes, we are making instruments which will extend our eyes. Indeed. So, this extension was done in so many different ways. One of the things that we did was that we created energetic forms which would make us look very, very far. Today, unfortunately, it is all being misunderstood and misrepresented. Uh, but there were instruments with which we could look very far, we could open windows into the cosmos. These we called as our deities. These are not gods, there is no concept of God in the East. Are you talking about modern telescopes or, 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 or ancient Both. metaphors? There were no, there were no ancient telescopes. This no, I meant metaphorical. Yes, they, they saw things by creating energetic forms. Mm. You have definitely heard of, uh, because he was in your neighborhood, Ramanujam. Yes, of course, yeah. So when people asked him, some uh, 3,900 mathematical formulations he mm. came out with, which is still being debated and discussed and tr people are trying to understand what he wrote. When people asked him, he was uh, dying of uh, tuberculosis. Mm. He sat on his deathbed and simply poured out mathematics. When people asked him, how does this come? He said, my Devi, which means my goddess, yes. bleeds mathematics. Mm. I, uh, Ramanujan was at my college, Trinity. Yes. But before <laughs> my time, so I never <laughs> met him. And, uh, and uh, it, to me, that is a fascinating example of how one can get information about the universe, not just through the intellect, but through inspiration. As you say, he thought no, he had no, no, his information. If I, want to, mm. if I should correct that, sir, I'm sorry I'm course, intervening. Yeah. You never get information through your intellect. You get information through your senses and there in the... in the intellect you mess it up. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, I mean to it? say you match it with the old information and try to make sense out of it. I, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't like to com admit that we always mess it up, but I think... No, that, no, uh, I'm saying we're trying to make sense out of yeah. it. But normally what we think is sensible right now, is actually blocking us, because what we think is smart, we can't leave. Yeah. What we think is stupid, we can leave easily. Scientific understanding of infinity. The concept of infinity has intrigued both scientists and mystics, leading to diverse approaches to understanding this profound idea. In mathematics, infinity is not a number, but a concept that describes something without any bound or limit. Mathematicians deal with different sizes of infinity, such as countable infinity, exemplified by the set of all integers, and unaccountable infinity seen in the set of real numbers. In calculus, infinity helps describe the behavior of function as they approach certain points or as variable grow without bound. George Cantor's set theory explores these infinities further, introducing the concept of cardinality to compare the sizes of infinite sets. In the realm of physics, infinity appears in discussions about the universe's structure and extent. Cosmologists contemplate whether the universe is infinite or finite but unbounded and some theories suggest the existence of an infinite number of parallel universes in a multiverse. Singularities such as those found in black holes represent points where gravitational pull leads to infinite density, presenting challenges to our understanding of space and time. Computer science also grapples with infinity through algorithms and computational processes. Infinite loops and data structures like streams in functional programming embody practical encounters with potentially endless operations. Yogic science of infinity. In contrast, the yogic perspective on infinity is deeply rooted in spiritual and philosophical traditions. Many yogic traditions view infinity as an expression of the boundless nature of the universe and consciousness. This perspective is often associated with the ultimate reality or Brahman, which is infinite and beyond human comprehension. Yogis strive to experience a sense of oneness with the infinite through deep meditation and spiritual practices, transcending the limitation of the finite mind and ego. Ancient Indian scriptures such as the Upanishads and Vedas 
delve into the nature of self atman and its unity with the infinite brahman the phrase tat tvam asi you are that encapsulates this unity emphasizing that individual consciousness is fundamentally one with the infinite the yoga sutras of patanjali outline a path to spiritual liberation where realizing one's true nature as infinite consciousness is a key goal this realization is often described as enlightenment or self realization a state of unity with the infinite practical aspects of yogic science include physical postures asanas and breath control pranayama which prepare the body and mind for experiencing higher states of consciousness these practices can lead to an awareness of the infinite the awakening of kundalini energy and the balancing of chakras are believed to facilitate access to higher states of consciousness connecting individuals with the infinite comparative insights both scientific and yogic approaches to infinity seek to understand the nature of existence beyond the apparent limits of the physical world while science employs empirical methods logical reasoning and mathematical modeling yogic science relies on experiential practices and inner exploration the scientific approach aims to describe and explain the infinite in terms of measurable phenomena and theoretical models in contrast yogic science seeks to transcend the finite self and achieve a state of unity with the infinite understanding infinity from both perspectives provides a rich and multifaceted view of this profound concept it highlights the complementary nature of rational inquiry and spiritual experience suggesting that both approaches can offer valuable insights into the nature of infinity and our place within the vast expanse of existence the convergence of these perspectives may ultimately lead to a more holistic understanding of infinity bridging the gap between the measurable and the mystical